come true in blue Hawaii and mine will all come true this magic night of night with you
scared to death And all at once I own the earth and sky Now I've met Miss Jones And we'll go on meeting till we die Miss Jones and I Miss Jones and I All right, well, we've kind of worked our way to the middle of the show here. And um, let's, you know, I kind of, at this point, at the 96th episode, kind of out of, like, historical items to share. But let's, uh, let's just look at some random magazines that I have. <laughs> um, I'll start with um, this one, one of my prized possessions. The, uh, it is the November 1989 issue of Transworld Skateboarding, which I'm not in, but uh, I got this at the trade show, and it features my good buddy, Mr. Ray Underhill, on the cover, and uh, autographed to me. So yes, definitely um, one, of my, one of my very prized possessions. It says, to my favorite D, because, uh, yeah, Ray's nickname for me was... AD, which kind of just morphed into D, and uh, so whenever I, we would see each other, that's the first thing we would say, D! <laughs> so, yeah, Ray Underhill writing a very lovely uh, Powell uh, experimental there uh, with uh, some kind of Airwalk, oh, the Airwalk Happy Face sticker that, I don't know, that could have been Jamie Mulehausen making that sticker. But yeah, so definitely... Um, Fond memories of my good friend. I wish he was still with me here. Um, so, yeah, rest in peace, Ray. You know, that's one of those things that Ray and I were supposed to be the old codgers that called each other on the weekends and complained about stuff as we got old. And that's what that's what we were on our way doing. And um, unfortunately, life had other plans. And uh, so I miss you, buddy. But, yeah, but I have this and fond, fond memories. And, again, I'm not in this issue, but I, I definitely kept it because of that. Um, so, speaking of not really being in the issues of skateboarding <laughs> publications by this time, um, February 1991, this was kind of like, you know, for me, 1990 was my first, well, my, my last full year as a pro skater, and then things were changing rapidly. So, by 91, it was sort of like, getting pushed out. So, here we are, uh, February 91, Eric Dressen on the cover of this, but as, as uh, things would be uh, um, changing for me, and the world of skateboarding was changing, um, there is a little, there was a little section that they uh, did uh, just talking to skaters about other things they do, and uh, if I could find it, somewhere in the back here, I should have marked it, I suppose. <laughs> I could have prepared a little better ahead of time. Um, there is some great skateboarding in here, uh, just not by me. Because <laughs> uh, realistically, at this time, I was not, not skating very well. And uh, I was kind of moving on to other things. Gosh, where did it go? So the stage pages are all sticking together now. Well... It's somewhere in here, and I know it's in the back. I will find it. Bear with me. Here we are. Talk section. Photo by, uh, is it Steve Sherman? Photo by Steve Sherman. And there I am in all my giant hair glory at the house in Oceanside with all my guitars. And um, so that kind of is where I was heading, obviously, started to play music, and they asked me things just general about music and what my take on things, and uh, I had really just started to delve deep into the jazz thing, and uh, yeah, <laughs> I sound a little full of myself, but oh well, you know, 91, I was, I was getting there, I was, I was figuring things out learning things. And yeah, this, this guitar actually was my favorite guitar there. It originally had a bunch of palace stickers on it. And, uh, and then I got on the house of Kasai and I took all the palace stickers off and put Lester Oak leaves all over the guitar. 
Um, it was a Charvel of some sort with, that was butchered with um, Steve Vai's pickups. It, so because my buddy Elwood, working for Steve Vai at the time, sent them to me, and so I put them in my main guitar. And I wasn't even really playing professionally yet at that point, but I had a bunch of guitars. And you can't really see it, but this guitar in the back right there that's completely black um, was a wireless guitar that uh, belonged to Steve Vai, and they used it on the uh, David Lee Roth Eat em and Smile Tour. And uh, it was made by Nady, and it was like had a wireless system built into it, but it was kind of a weird guitar. So what they did, uh, what Elwood did actually, was he mounted a pair of trucks and some wheels onto the back of that guitar, and they would use the guitar on um, uh, California Girls. And at the end of the song, Steve would take the, the uh, guitar off, put it on the ground, and roll it off stage. And the, uh, Elwood told me that he accidentally mounted the trucks kind of crooked, so, but it worked out fine because then he put it on the stage and he'd roll it and it would arc perfectly across the stage, turn back and go straight to Elwood. Um, and yeah, and he would take it. Although one time he said that he, cre he caught the guitar as it rolled to him and the string end um, caught his finger and it sliced one of his fingers wide open. And, uh, and so there was blood everywhere and yeah, punk rock. But anyway, yes, there I am, 1991 saying, I think I'm done with skateboarding because skateboarding's done with me. <laughs> so that's where we went there. A um, couple other um, oddball things. This is, uh, um, I'm not really in this one, so to speak, Japanese magazine called Surfer and uh, done the, uh, the Japanese style. So this is the front cover, even though this would be our... And uh, um, there's some really cool things in here, uh, which just kind of like surf and skate scene things um, that I think if I can find the, the uh, oh well. Well, there is an article on the Expo Contest, 1986. And I, you know, obviously, oh, this was in issue number five in, uh, um, 1987, but it has an issue, it has an article on the Expo 86 contest in Vancouver. And this is actually pretty cool because, you know, people that might not know or they kind of know a little bit about the, the contest at the, uh, at the Expo, the World Expo, um, they started off with this really horrible ramp with the wood on sideways. Um, so you'd kind of try to go up the ramp and hit all these seams and, da, 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 and no one could really do anything. And then it started to fall apart. And then uh, actually at that point, um, the, they, they put plywood over it going the other way. Um, and, but they didn't want to use masonite. They said, no, this is plywood. We're going to use the plywood. And so they put the plywood over the existing ramp, which was still really small. And that's when Jeff Phillips and Lester Kasai got giant splinters. Uh, Jeff had it go right from, like through his foot, right to the top of like by his big toe and straight through a big spear, like a eight inch long spear, a sliver of wood go through. And then Lester had one that went through his hand, um, about a six inch thing. So this was after they said, okay, enough. We're gonna have to rebuild the ramp how we want it. And so you can kind of see as they're Rebuilding the ramp, they're actually adding uh, a top section. I don't know if you can kind of see. Yeah, you can see they're adding vertical to it. Right below there, that seam was the original height of the ramp and was way too small and had no vert and everybody was getting hurt. So they added that onto the decks and then they're adding uh, masonite over the plywood. And uh, um, yeah, so that's, that's pretty cool that they kind of caught that and this is probably midnight or something like that. It's late at night. And as you can see, there's a ton of people working on the ramp, trying frantically to finish the ramp before the contest the next day. And um, what's also cool, yeah, I mean, people had, people had practice sessions at 6 in the morning. I think Kevin Staub was one of those that his practice session was at either 6 or 6.30 in the morning. Um, so here's a, here's a photo that's, of, of young Anthony Frank Hawk um, warming up, practicing. But as you can see, they're still working on the ramp. 
<laughs> they're still trying to put it together. The contest is literally starting, and they're still working on the ramp. Yeah, that's how it was, the 86 Expo contest. And um, I didn't get any photos on the ramp because I, I placed seventh because I hung up on an Andrek and uh, near, knocked myself silly. But I remember Joe Lopes, rest in peace, Joe, um, as I stumbled off the, the bottom of the ramp, Joe kind of peeked around the corner and said, hey, are you all right? And I was like, ah. And it was just kind of spun, and so I ended up with seventh. But anyway, um, Henry Gutierrez won the AM contest uh, deservedly, so for sure. He was ripping. He was, he was going to win anyway. But um, So the picture I got, <laughs> lovely little picture right here with my good friend, Mr. Rodney Mullen, and me giving a big hug to Rodney Mullen, who just scored a perfect 100. And uh, thank you to whoever, <laughs> whoever got the photo, Got me uh, hugging my buddy because, I, you know, at this time, Rodney was kind of like figuring some things out. And he finally was able to kind of just let go of some some of the stress that he would put on himself. And so the 100 score was more than just like just that he got a perfect score. It was more like a big statement of, you know, a, he kind of allowed himself to just do whatever, whether he fell or not. And that run, two runs actually, he had flawless runs. So I just happened to <laughs> run back just in time to be there. So there's my photo in this magazine of surfer in Japan. Um, yeah, good memories, good contest. Um, so this other Japanese magazine I have, Ollie Magazine, is actually done uh, Western Universe style um, with the cover. And there's Mr. Ken Park on the cover. And uh, Ken. <laughs> Ken Park, very good skateboarder, very talented skateboarder, kind of got harassed a lot because um, Ken, it was kind of like a, for lack of a better word, he was kind of a jock and just very serious, you know, about everything. And so he kind of got a little bit of a bad rap for being that way, um, backing them. But, oh well, that's, that's happens. Ken Park, um, and Neil discovered if you if you flip his name around uh, and backwards, it's crap neck. <laughs> so, yeah, poor Ken Park, uh, the nickname crap neck. Yeah, but good skater and a good friend, really. Um, but there's some good stuff in here. Really cool, uh, just kind of on the Japanese skateboarding scene and lots of stuff going on in the mid '80s. Uh, and uh, just kind of random things. Oh, look at young Danny Way in Japan. And I think this is the uh, article. Yeah, a little, a little interview with Danny. But they do a little article in here on this place called the L.A. Club. And when um, Lance and Stevie and I and Kevin Harris went uh, to Japan, they took us to this L.A. club, the Los Angeles club, and it had a bunch of little ramps built into it. But we went there the night before, actually the morning that we were leaving, and we decided to stay up all night and skate and uh, um, at this club and try to just sleep all the way home on the plane, which didn't work. It worked for Steve Caballero because he could sleep anywhere, but Lance and I were awake. But here's a little uh, cool double exposure of me doing a little air at the LA club and that ramp um, is about, I, I wanna say it was about three feet high. Um, <laughs> so yeah, but there's a really good picture of Lester too, doing air at that, on that same wall in that bowl, Mr. Lester Kasai. And, uh, but you know, we, he and I had the advantage of skating Sadlands, which was really small. And so that kind of was right up our alley. But the LA Club. Um, but there's some other cool pictures in here. Really good pictures. Nice picture of Rodney. Doing the flat ground Ollie. Um, and uh, great, great, great shots of the Japanese skaters here, which I, you know, it's all in Japanese, so I don't know who they are. Um, but, uh, uh, but very, very cool. And this, the Japanese skaters were ripping. I mean, really really great skaters, really great, great, great talented skaters. Um, I know that Mitsugu Toyota is in here somewhere because he is the, the king. 
He's the, the ruler of uh, the Japanese skate scene. Um, yeah, these guys. I'll just hold them up because they're cool. Super cool. And, uh, oh, yeah, and I don't know who, I don't know his name. I can't remember his name. If anybody watching this knows this guy from uh, Hoshin Limited, that's the guy that took care of us when we went over there. And so, thank you. I wish I could remember your name. <laughs> but I do have a photo somewhere in here. Um, and uh, I will find it. I know, as I run out of time, because I'm ill-prepared. But the, oh, another great picture of Danny Way. We might as well just show a picture of Danny Way. Followed by a great picture of the one and only Monty Nolder. That was the Shut Up and Skate in uh, Houston. And I'm going to find it. Oh, the Gons. Mark Gonzalez at the, uh, somewhere, <laughs> some school somewhere. Um, okay, I'm going to find it. It's in here. I actually do have a picture in here. Oh, uh, see, I should have, I should have uh, marked them, but um, alas, I did not. Well, here's a picture of, of Tony at his ramp. Tony Hawk, Indy Nosebone, Fallbrook. Okay, so I'm in the, I'm in the correct area. <laughs> there it is. And of course, what is it going to be? A judo wear. It's always a judo wear. <laughs> At Tony's house in Fallbrook, and uh, um, yeah, Ryan Free Airwalk. And uh, um, interesting tidbit of these, if you can kind of see these green trucks that I'm riding. I will hold it up close. Green Tracker six tracks. Uh, magnesium hangers that I, I didn't steal, but I, I took off of a, there was a, a, a board that had a bunch of different color samples. And these were these lime green things. And I was like, ooh, I want those. I didn't even realize they were magnesium trucks. But um, yeah, so there was just one board of basically the last of the magnesium hangers. And I, I rode the green ones for a long time. And, uh, and then I got in trouble because people started calling up asking for the green trucks, <laughs> which they didn't make. So sorry, Tracker. But yeah, I rode them forever and they were, they were really good. So I have one more magazine to share with us uh, today, kind of uh, continuing our, our tribute to the young Anthony Frank, Tony Hawk. And if you haven't seen that, that documentary until the wheels fall off, I, I definitely recommend it. You should definitely seek it out. Um, so this brings us to the November 24th, 1986 Sports Illustrated. And um, this was a really big deal at the time. And uh, I remember hearing that um, Tony was gonna be featured in Sports Illustrated. And we were like, whoa. Because at the time, you know, this was mainstream sports and skateboarding was not mainstream. But uh, so here we are. Anthony Frank, Tony Hawk, chairman of the board, Sports Illustrated. And uh, in the blue helmet is Christian Osoy. But um, yeah, so very big deal to for Tony to be featured in... Uh, a mainstream publication and uh, Tony one of his ads. And then of course, Frank and Nancy Hawk, his parents, uh, greatest people on, on, in, in the world. They were, they were so kind to all of us. His dad was a little gruff, um, but he had to be the guy that tried to keep us in line. And so he got a lot of flack for that. Um, but Nancy just kind of treated all of us like we were just extended family. All of us were her kids as far as she's concerned. 
Uh, and then one more picture of Tony doing an invert over his brother Steve in the half pipe at Del Mar. So yeah, this is, um, it's a cool thing to have. And uh, you know, it's, they got some things right, some things wrong. Um, at least they got some, a couple of decent photos in there. But yeah, I remember everybody being pretty excited that he was featured in Sports Illustrated of all things. Yeah. So there we go. The magazines for today, which I kind of like, I know. <laughs> some, some of it uh, historical, some of it not, but it's fun. And uh, it's just stuff I'm holding on to. This lovely day will lengthen into evening We'll sigh goodbye to all we've ever had Alone where we have walked together I'll remember April and be glad
sore I think you've taken this too far I never wanted to be different Didn't ask to be nobody's star Try to take control of it Cause what you see is what you get Try to take control of it and not me Revolution. So what's new? You say there's fighting in the air. You think that I've got the solution. But do you really think that's fair? Try to take control of it, cause what you see is what you get. Try to take control of it and you'll see. Don't want to be nobody's hero Don't want to be nobody's star Don't want to be nobody's hero Get up, get out, be what you are You think it's time you took me over do what you can't do yourself But don't let heroes get your kicks for you It's up to you and no one else Try to take control of it Cause what you see is what you get Try to take control of it and you'll see Don't want to be nobody's hero Don't want to be nobody's star Don't want to be nobody's hero Get up, get out, be what you are You think you're nobody is a nobody, everyone is someone, don't want to be nobody's hero, don't want to be nobody's star, don't want to be nobody's hero, get up, get out, be what you Be what you are, 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 be what you are.